Hello guys, uh, welcome to welcome to another episode of Success Navigation. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Haseeb, a founder of Brandkit, where we are helping e-commerce brands to uh, optimize their supply chain processes. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Vincenzo, and he's the founder of EcomC, a well-known services agency in the Amazon space. And uh, today we will be talking about how to build your network and scale it through conferencing and another part would be because I am seeing Vincenzo a lot active in this space. So we'll be learning him about some tips and tricks about um, scaling your agency through conferencing and you know how he closes the deals and how his sales pipeline works. So that will be the part of that. A little bit of a Vincenzo, like his background is in aerospace engineering and then he transferred it to uh, Amazon and e-commerce side. So we will start with Vincenzo and Vincenzo, if you can start with uh, a little bit about your background and introduction and we can take things from there. Yeah. So the first thing, Haseba, I want to thank you for having me on. I think it, it, what you guys doing with your podcast is amazing. The, the level of guests and content is very good. So keep doing it. I appreciate it. And yes, um, a quick intro about myself, just uh, for everybody that don't, don't know me. Uh, yes, my name is Vincenzo. I'm the founder and CEO of Ecamsi. We are full Amazon and Walmart a brand management agency where we specialize on scaling and growing brands on, on these marketplaces. And yes, as Hasif has said, uh, in the last few months, I've been jumping around a lot. <laughs> so a lot of events going around. So that's something I'm going to be discussing today and how you can leverage, you know, networking to scale your business um, and yes so looking forward to this discussion thank you very much yeah perfect uh thanks man and uh, yeah uh i just want to know a little bit like how it was you know transitioning from uh, an engineering background because personally my background is in mechanical engineering and back mm -hmm. in 2020 i transitioned to e-commerce space and i think that is what like that we are quite similar in that journey so yeah. just you know a little bit about that part of your journey sure. Sure. So yes, uh, my major is aerospace engineering and I started working in the industry specifically for Rolls Royce. I was in the division uh, of doing the co computer unit behind the turbines. I was doing that for around two years. And the reason why I came into e-commerce is because I come from a family that's very business oriented. And I always wanted to have something of my own. And to be honest, after starting my engineering job, which I love engineering. I love technical stuff, everything that has to do with, you know, space and so on. That's why I studied aerospace engineering. The thing that was a, a big no-no a for me was the fact that I wasn't really in control of, of my time. I wasn't really in control of my location. And I, was, I wasn't really in control of the amount of money I could do, which at the end of the day, that's what was going to give me the freedom to, you know, enjoy with my family, my friends, girlfriend, etc. So... Being said that, I started, you know, doing some research online, trying to find different venues to do some income. And that's how I found a, basically Amazon FBA. And from there, you know, I started launching different products. I had my own brands and everything. And then from there, after going to different amount of events, I also found that, you know, there were a lot of people had amazing products, amazing brands, but they really didn't have the time uh, or the knowledge to really make them successful on, on Amazon specifically. So that's how I came to the idea uh, to found a Camsi and to do full account management to basically help them from set with everything that I have learned with my brands uh, and my clients. Uh, and then from there, you know, it comes to grew. We've been in the space for over three years now, uh, 25 yeah. plus 18 members. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> great, great. So I uh, just wanted to learn a bit about e See, Like your main offering is uh, A to Z Amazon launch. I just want to know like how it is going in these days. Are you still launching new products or are you focusing more on growing the accounts and uh, stuff like that? Yeah, so uh, our main focus is at the moment have the uh, brands that are already existing on Amazon to go to the next phase when it comes to efficiency mm -hmm. and, and, and all the things that have to be done to, you know, be able to scale the brand to the next level. We're focusing a lot with our clients to expand to international markets. So lately we're helping a lot of US brands to come to Europe and U European brands go to the US. And yes, we constantly try to launch new products, but we are very methodical and the way we do it because we always want to make sure that if we launch a product is with the strategy in mind that's going to add value to the current ecosystem and the brand that a brand offering they're bringing to the market it's not like we are just launching random products like uh, people used to do back into 2014-15 it's with a strategy in mind to basically be able to generate 
that brand halo effect. And another thing we are starting to do as well with our clients, we actually, I think two weeks ago, we became one of the only uh, one of the only twenty agencies right now in the world that is official partner and, and certified partner with Walmart. So we mm-hmm. uh, start working with all our clients to uh, have them expand the horizon on Walmart as well. So very exciting things are coming this year. Yeah. Great, great, great to hear mm-hmm. about that. Um, coming to the topic, so um, when it comes to you know building your sale and s- sales pipeline and scaling it, uh, I want to know like how you are covering or generating leads in the first stage and how you are moving them down the line. Like, what are your main sources that mm-hmm. you focus? I- I'm sure there might be multiple, but what what are your current sources and what is the main source from where your lead generation cycle begins and how it flows through? Sure. So, um. Fun enough, uh, we don't run any kind of advertisement. Everything that we do is organically. Uh, so the first uh, source of uh, clients that we're going to get is word of mouth. So because mm-hmm. of the good results we are getting to some of our brands, the people just recommend us within the community. And let's be honest, the Amazon community, is, we think it's big, but actually it's not that big. It's very small. So whatever you do, people know. <laughs> so, yeah just by people recommending us and, and those people recommending us to another people, that would be the number one channel when it comes to a people that come to us. Then after that, I will have to say it's definitely our social media uh, channel. So with the podcast that we have going on and not the content that we do with our blogs and newsletters that also help us generate some good awareness and people that come to us. We also have very strong partnerships with some of the top leaders in the space. So, for example, we are one of the certified agencies from Healing Time. So we get some traffic from that. We also have a strong partnership with the, a people such as Abbas, Etida, et cetera. And that mutual, mutual support is very uh, important to grow your presence in the space. Mm-hmm. And then after all this, I would say Google is something that's been increasing lately for us. So we've been uh, jumping very fast on some of the main keywords when it comes to uh, ACO. And one of the main reasons because we're doing a lot of blogs. Uh, we do like one or two per week at the moment. So that's helping us bring some organic traffic as well. And from those, we're also getting discovered. So yeah, as you can see. And finally, of course, events. I forgot to say events. <laughs> It's something that lately is also been beneficial from us, you know, uh, by going to these events and connecting with amazing people that then they understand the value you can bring to the table is something that is being allowing us to also grow as an agency. Yeah. Great, great to hear about that. Uh, one part you mentioned about partnering with uh, other companies like Getaida and all that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I would like to know like how you know, you approach and build those kind of partnerships and what are, you know, the requirements if that you need to meet and to build up that collaboration just for the audience. Uh, I know the back end stuff, but just for the audience and how you are working around that. Sure. I think when it comes to partnership, uh, it's not like rocket science. And what I mean by this is like, it's not like you need to do something very specific to create a partnership. I think it's all about mutual mm-hmm. value. And I would say when it comes to partnership, one of the big mistakes a lot of people do is that uh, they try to focus first on what they get instead of what they can actually provide. So try to first focus before you reach somebody for partnership, thinking how I can help this uh, company, right? I can help them with content i can have them with exposure i can have them with leads i can have them with connection with other partners so these are the things you need to think uh, that you know other people are going to value a lot and then by you know providing 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 eventually you know things are also going to come back to you i wouldn't say necessarily you need to go out there and start providing with the thinking that you want something back because again people can definitely read that and feel that i would say you just need to focus on being something genuine provide value and if things really add value to the market, people is gonna, are going to come back to you. And I would say as, as you start building that snowball effect of bringing mm-hmm. value to the market and people knowing you, partnerships are actually going to come to you because people see that you are somebody that definitely add value to the market. You know what you're doing and people actually want to, you know, they want to be with other like-minded people that know what they're doing. And you're going to just attract the right people once you start doing the right thing as well. So. Yeah. I think, yeah, I will just add one point here. Like uh, content creation is the best part to start with that. So once people start uh, mm-hmm. seeing you creating content and when you approach them, they definitely want to be on your podcast or either on your uh, on or, or on your pages and social media. So in that way, that would be like, you know, a good 
starting point to build up a partnership without expecting anything uh, from the other person. So once they are in your contact with time, you can scale it up to like uh, any kind of need and where some of your client needs something, you can just reach out and connect them. So uh, I think that 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 is like a good way to strategize things around. Uh, That's building right. Network. Yeah. Yeah, content is king. I mean, there is nothing, there's not such a thing as bad content. I would say anything that you feel you can do when it comes to, you know, putting something out there that reflects a, some kind of activity that you're doing or, or kind of strategy, anything that, you know, keeps showing you in the space is going to add value to you. And I think that it comes the same with partnerships. I think partnerships is, is some, some of the main things that you're going to get when it comes to value is a content because content is something that's going to benefit both parties. And at the end of the day, partnerships is all about that, making sure you do something that adds value to both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, perfect. So uh, coming to uh, coming to another point, like uh, you are, I'm seeing you a lot these days in all these conferences. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I just want to uh, understand like how it is affecting your agency growth and uh, what is kind of, you know, tips for the agencies that are not at that stage where they are just sitting in their offices or either reaching out to clients. So I just want to know the physical meetup importance and how it is affecting your agency growth and personal growth, definitely. Sure. So, I mean, one of the things I love about events is the networking side of things. I know uh, some people see events more as a way to get clients. I actually see opposite. I focus more on actually people, like-minded people. And the reason why for me this is very important is because, I mean, I'm 24-7 on the office working, talking just with people through camera and microphone, etc. And And this is the few opportunities you get to actually meet other people, understand what you're talking about, understand where you're coming from, and you're not seen as an alien when you go out there and talk about Amazon FBA, right? Uh, so that's, I think, the number one thing that I love about events. And then on top of that, yes, it, partnerships, number one. I mean, you need to understand that you, as a service provider, when going to these events, you're going to meet with other service providers that have similar strategies. It could be in terms of sales. It could be in terms of strategies to control certain um, things when it comes to the region, in terms of marketing, etc. And you can try to do some alliances that can benefit each other. And then on top of that, I would say in these events, you're also going to find, you know, people that are selling on Amazon that, you know, sometimes they haven't made the decision to use certain services or certain uh, kind of support on their business because they sometimes they, they haven't uh, really found that human connection between the actual need and what the uh, uh, some person in the space can offer them. So when you meet face-to-face -face and you really listen to, what they're actually going through and you with your knowledge and experience can actually help them dissect where is the issue and where you can actually help them uh, with your uh, services. That's usually the best way to try to build that alliance, right? And do what most agencies do out there that is blasting emails randomly to people or cold calling and all that, which I feel in 2023, personally, that's that, yeah. Great, great. Uh, I think, yes, uh, you know, uh, um, with this COVID thing and after that, this all period transitioned us into only office spaces. So definitely meeting in that personal space and knowing someone more and what they are doing is like a different kind of experience and which we definitely need to experience. And uh, the cost that you put into those conferences, are you putting it like in your agency expenses or is it just your kind of growth or you can say a budget that you fix for yourself? Yeah, of course, when it comes to uh, uh, events, something very important to know is that they are not cheap, of course, especially if you need yeah. to travel overseas and you need to stay on hotel flights, sponsorships and all that. I will say that it's diff difficult to quantify um, the ROAS of the investment because sometimes you might go to an event and you might not get any single lead, but then two months later, somebody calls you, oh, I saw you at this event. Um, because of this presentation or because you spoke to this person, this person spoke to me and that's how I found you. And, and that's why it's very difficult to really uh, track down the value that sometimes events can bring to you in terms of uh, monetary or revenue uh, basis. So I would say, yes, 
for sure this has to be seen as an investment and when i see invest when i say investment is that the same money that maybe right now you're putting into google ads or facebook ads or email mm-hmm. marketing i would definitely reroute all that to go into events i think that is going to definitely give you more a uh, value in the long term mainly because of relationships and the kind of person i think relationships is what really uh, creates the the network of an individual um so yes i will say it's an investment. Of course, it's going to be expensive initially when you don't see the returns. But if you know and connect with the right people, you provide value to the community and you definitely know what you're doing, eventually it's going to be something that's going to 10x your business. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, because these events are quite costly and uh, we cannot calculate the ROAs. But yeah. when it comes to like personal growth and getting benefits from that, that is definitely uh, a, a thing that we can expect from those conferences. And uh, like, I just want to touch it a little bit on another part st- that, that is that was all about the lead generation part. And when you go down a little bit in the funnel, so mm-hmm. most of the people in the agency space, they like they, they lose most of the leads. Uh, yeah due to some gaps in their sales pipeline. So mm-hmm. uh, I would like to know like, what is your uh, current success with closing the leads and what exactly is your process that you follow with your clients and that is helping you out and uh, the mistakes that you are seeing uh, happens a lot of the time in space. Yeah, I think the number one mistake that people do a lot is that uh, they try to focus on on, ma- on uh, trying to get the sale done as soon as possible, right? The first trying to provide some value. And making sure, first of all, that the client is the right client for you, because I understand that some services and agencies were getting started, but you are, you are starving for revenue. You want to make revenue regardless of at, at all costs. But the, the danger of doing that is that you end up getting maybe clients that realistically you cannot have them. They don't have the, a, a good pro. They don't have a good brand. Mm-hmm. Maybe they are clients that, you know, a typical client that... It, loves to do a uh, micromanagement which means they're gonna be calling you every single hour every single day and and those things can you know really affect your business grow in the long term so i would say the number one thing that you have to do in your sales uh, pipeline is you need to offer value first and make a filter at the same time so what does it mean i will never get any client before doing an in-depth audit which i know most people charge for it uh, here, this audit is very time consuming for us, it's costly, mm-hmm. but it's an insurance because with this audit, we make sure that actually if we do the audit and we see the things inside out of the business, that we actually match with our criteria and we can actually help them, that's going to guarantee long term that the client, first of all, stays with us, stays happy, and that we can actually deliver. So, yes, try to do all this. Try to first understand the uh, the customer needs. Try to even provide value. I know sometimes people don't like to throw away their findings on the account and what they're doing wrong because they might think, oh, these guys are going to take the tips and do it themselves So an agency. I mean, the reason why they're with you in the first place is because they they don't care about the things that are wrong because they don't have the time or they don't really understand what's going wrong. Even if you mention to them one hour later, they're going to forget about that. So yeah, <laughs> I would say the number one thing is provide value, 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 and then try to use that at the same time to make sure you match with the right people that you can, you know, definitely provide a, you know, results in the long term, because if not, yeah. what's the point? You're going to get a client and two, three months in, they're going to be, angry with you is going to create a bad experience for you. It's going to be toxic for your team. You get a, get a bad reputation and for what, for the few thousands that it's going to generate it is not worth it. So, yeah. Yeah. That definitely, uh, you know, maybe they can go on in some groups and destroy your whole image <laughs> due to your experience with them. That is also a part that we have seen. Mm-hmm. And, uh, another important part is like, uh, there are like two types of people that are usually seen in the space, in the seller space, like some are there for growth and some are there so, to solve their pain points. Mm-hmm. So you need to, you know, th- every agency has their own goals. Like for me, I would like to go with those clients that are looking for growth sure. because the system that I'm implementing, uh, they usually require a huge budget to go up to a next stage. But if the client has some pain points, I cannot offer them that service even because with that, they will just even more suffer and they, their mm-hmm. profit margin will go down. So that is yeah. something that is like a very good point. We need to understand the client first and uh, match that with our criteria. Don't just onboard every other client 
for uh, just some small revenue for a small period of time and yeah, that no is worries. one reason like uh, with our agency we have like a 100% retention rate so far we never dropped even a single client so far so that's good this is yeah Same. this is yeah we're very we're very strict as well we make sure that uh, whenever we onboard a client we know 100% uh, we can work with them in fact if i need to give you a number i think 8 out of 10 people reach out they are, we say no so yeah, we're very strict with who we onboard because we need to make sure that we can actually add value and and that they are the right fit for us. Yeah, great. Yeah, definitely uh, great. I think that was uh, you know really helpful. Uh, I we will take we will take just uh, some questions. I have one question in the comments. Sure. So yeah, let's have a look at the questions. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. how frequent physical meetups feel like? Yeah. Yeah, this is a good question because <laughs> I think it, it can also become a little bit addictive event. So you can end up going to every single event and then that's also become very unproductive. Uh, so I would say there isn't really a, a magic formula. I would say as a minimum, I would try at least when you're getting started. What, I mean, when I was getting started, I was going to every single event, but that's because me, I'm very like, competitive driven and every single thing that was an event i mean there are months that i'm going to six eight events so it really depends uh, on your time and the budget again as well but i would say as a bare minimum yes one two events per month as a bare minimum at least when you get it started and then you know once you start building some kind of stable uh, flow of at least business or not even business at least of partnerships and, and things that are going to add value to you in the long term you can deal down but even me uh, I, I don't really uh, I don't really have plans to stop going to events regardless of my my position in, in the space so uh, I would keep going to every single event that I think is going to add value because again uh, at the end of the day success I feel a uh, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, the, uh, this guy was successful because he got lucky. But at the end of the day, luck, you create luck. And the way you create luck is a mathematical thing. The more probabilities you put on the table, the more yeah. probabilities mathematically you have to meet the right person to reach certain uh, uh, success in your life. So I will say the more chances you give yourself to get yourself out there, that's going to give uh, the chance that you get lucky and you achieve that thing that you're looking for. So. Great, great. Uh, Vikanza, I think that was, uh, you know, really helpful, that probability thing that is coming <laughs> from engineering side, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah of course. Definitely. The more probability you put on the table, the more success you will have. So, mm -hmm. uh, Vikanza, I guess we are right at the spot. So, we will uh, close the podcast with this note. Uh, any kind of uh, note that you would like to add for my audience in the end? So, yeah, I would say when it comes to everybody that's building a, a service provider, a agency uh, i mean try to not uh, get at that mentality at the start everything's about sales 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 getting leads 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 mm -hmm. because i feel like people get too caught on that and then they end up uh, sometimes even burning out or sometimes even ruining their reputation because they get known as the person that only cares about making sales and, and pitching mm -hmm. so try to also uh, focus on building meaningful relationships try to be more patient try to also focus on giving some value first before you ask something back because again this this space is all, all about what you can bring to the, to the table if you're not bringing anything to the table why should people connect with you why should people partner with you so focus on what you can first give as an individual as an agency as, as, as something genuine to the space and you're gonna see if you keep doing that for a long t period of time eventually you're gonna see uh, the results yeah great great Perfect, Vicenzo. And I think it was a really great discussion on uh, a very important topic that I personally wanted to understand and definitely on the will like as, it as well. So uh, thank you, Vicenzo, for your time. And yeah, we, we are yeah, already talking uh, yeah. now and then. And uh, yeah. yeah, let's change. It's us been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Here. I appreciate the invite. Uh, and yes, guys, I mean, we are here for you. Any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can find me as Vincenzo everywhere and feel free to DM me. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Have a great day to you and uh, yeah, talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.